Welcome to Unit 6. We're well more than um, halfway done with um, this first game project, so let's get started. So last week you added animation to parts of your game, to the target, to the danger, to mystery. Um, however, these game images just fly off the edge of the screen. What you need is some testing to figure out whether to automatically change direction. Today we'll learn about a new data type that helps with this kind of testing. So what data types have you seen so far? Think about that. Numbers, right? We've seen numbers, you know what those are. One, two, three, four, five. Strings, we know about strings, like you can put quote, hello world, quote, or double quotes. Um, so you know about strings. Images, you've used images a lot, and they have special procedures which, um, for which the domain is images, like being able to scale an image or overlay images. So what are some expressions that evaluate to number? How about other data types? So let's go into Dr. Racket and just let's remember some of the things that we know. So numbers, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make that a little bigger. So numbers, let's look. So for a number by itself evaluates to five, and we can do certain procedures on numbers. Um, we can't mix together different data types with, with some procedures. So let's put a number and a string. Right, so plus expects a number as a second argument, but we gave high, which is um, not a number, so let's see what type it is. Type. Can't do type, but we can do um, Yep, okay. So some, some functions take strings in um, some numbers. So now we're going to look at a new, let's see, let's, let's look at these four pieces of code. So plus one, four. All right, and with that, the domain of that is numbers, because it takes in two numbers. And I'm saying the range is also going to be a number. It's going to give us a number. Yep, so five is a number. Times seven, five. Also a number, less than 3, 4. What do we think that's going to be? Not a number. It's just something called true. So the, the hash symbol, number, or it's also called the number sign or the pound sign. But now people call it hash a lot. So the hash symbol, true, is a special kind of thing just like string, just like a number. Oh, let's do this last one. I don't think I have the teach pack in. I think I added the bootstrap teach pack back because I had switched computers, so I had to add that back. All right, just let's do a circle. Is that 10? Okay. And remember that we saw something strange, or at least new, for this less than function. What do we think would happen if the numbers are swapped? So let's go back to the one that we looked at before. Less than 3, 4. True. Let's see what happens if we swap. Or three. What do you think will happen? False. So the function less than, which is this bracket here, tests if one number is less than a number. So less than is pointing to the left. Can you think of some other tests? So what would we think? If there's a less than, I wonder if there's a greater than. That's the other direction. Let's do three, four. False, because 
3 is not greater than 4. So I would think that 4, 3, because 4 is greater than 3, would be true. What else? I bet there's an equal. 4 and 3 are not equal, so that should be false. Let's see if 4 and 4 are equal. Good, that's a good guess. So equals, less than, greater than. So now once you pause for a second and you try some, um, less than, equal, greater than, and see if you can think of some other tests. So pause now. Okay, great. So yep, less than, equal than, greater, equal to, greater than. What is the range of these functions? So at least all the ones we tried were, uh, for the domain, uh, we saw numbers. The range, no matter what we put in, was always either true or false. And so those are called Boolean values. That's named after somebody, so it's a weird word, but it's named after a guy named Bool, B-O-O-L-E. Boolean and true and false are the range. So it's a new data type, and Booleans are answers to yes or no questions. So that makes them perfect to perform tests, because tests we want either true or false. Or we could call it pass or fail or yes or no, but in Boolean words we'd always just say true and false. So what sort of tests might be needed in a video game? So pause for a second and think of some tests you might need in a video game where the answers might be true or false. Okay. Um, so here's some things that you might need to be true or false. And we started off with the motivating, motivating example of our game elements flying off the edge of the screen. So we might want to test whether we're whether our image is positioned at the edge of the screen. And if it is, then we could do something else. If it's something, if it's a ball that bounces, that like if you remember the game we did this summer, we tested to see if the ball was greater, the position of the ball was lower than the position of the paddle. If it was, we bounced it. We, we reversed the direction, right? We, we just made a negative for the direction. Um, but we could also make it wrap around to the other side of the screen. There's a lot of different things we could do, but we need to know where whether our um, element is off the edge of the screen, and that could be a test. So... What do we expect to get back when we enter a string, a number, or a boolean? Let's try it. So if we put in a string, we get a string. If we put in a number, we get a number. Now, they didn't tell me what how to enter a boolean, but I'm just going to do the same thing that we did that that we the answer we got back here. So I'm just going to do say pound or hash true. And I get a hash true. So that's how we can enter those. So now I want you to pause for a second. And you try entering a number, a string, and a boolean. See what you get back. OK. So let's do, um, we can use circles of evaluation with booleans. So um, open your workbook to page 18, which is the Unix 6 cover page. And this is just a place to write in. Um, so you can like look at that, you can, if you don't want to write on the, the, the printed page for the Unix 6 cover page, you can also write on the back of the page. We only print it on one side, so you can turn it over and write on the back, but that'll just be a good place to do it. And do the circles of evaluation for these one, two, three, four. Um, I'll do the, the first one as an example. And so you, then you can copy that one and then do the rest of them. So then we'll convert it to code and test it in Dr. Racket. All right. So I'm going to do this first one as an example. All right. There's my blank circle of evaluation. 
All right, what's my operation here in 10 equals 16.1? Remember, equals is going to test whether these two things are equal, these two numbers are equal. So that's the operation. I know that that goes on top. So I'm going to say equal. And then we go from left to right. So here is 10. Here is 16.1. Right? I believe that's a good circle of evaluation. My racket code is going to be, I know I start coming in from the outside. The first thing that comes in, the first thing I do is eat the uh, operator. So let's go equals. All right, then we go from left to right, 10, 16.1. Close the circle. All right, now let's go try that in Dr. Racket. So you can see that down at the bottom. Bring that to a little bit. All right, so the, let me go back and look. Equal 10, 16.1. And what do I think is going to happen? Well, 10 and 16.1 are not equal, so I think it's going to be Boolean false. Yes, that's correct. All right, so that's how you do those. So on that, the, the back of that uh, cover sheet, on the back of that, let me get to the right place, okay. Yep, on the back of that Unit 6 cover page in your book, go ahead and do the circles of evaluation for these four, and then beside those, write the racket code that represents those circles of evaluation, and then, um, Type each one of those sets of racket code into Dr. Racket to make sure they work like you think they should. And some of them are, are a little more complicated, like look at this one right here. You're going to have um, a big circle, right, with a less than in it. And inside that, there's going to be two circles, a minus one on the left and a times one on the right. If you have any trouble with those, come and get me and I'll help you. All right, so pause now and do these exercises. Okay, good. That's my example we just did. So there are many other functions that produce Boolean. So here's one, string equals question mark. So first, let's look at just the regular equals. Let's do cat and dog. equals expects a number as first argument given cat, which is a string. So it looks like the domain of this equal sign is a number. So that's why in this example they show us string equals question mark. And um, so that makes sense. They told us that string equals, so that kind of tells us that it's going to expect strings equals is going to tell us the kind of thing it's doing and then um, it doesn't do it for this equal but for other things that are going to produce booleans a lot of times they put a question mark and you could say like string huh um, or string equal huh and that kind of lets you know or gets you thinking about this is going to produce a boolean output it's going to say yes or no or true or false so now let's do string huh cat dog string equal huh false because they don't equal each other. Oops, sorry about that. Let's do one string equal huh? Cat. Cat. True. And, and of course these are silly examples because I'm typing in and of course a cat equals cat. But inside a program you may have different kinds of variables coming in, right? And we may want to say, is my variable coming in equal to cat? And then we might be able to want to do something else with that information. So we want to, might want to do this something based on this test. So even though these are silly examples because I'm typing them, they'll be useful in programs. 
So here's an example that when we've, we've seen before that um, capital and lowercase don't necessarily equal the same thing. So let's do that. String equal, huh? They did space and space. And that's false because they're not the same. Even though we say them the same and we know in English we might use them the same, um, they're different strings. But it looks like they're telling us this string ci, huh? String ci, huh? That's going to say true. So, um, I think probably CI stands for case insensitive. So case, you know the uppercase and lowercase. Um, and so I, for in this, the, in this example, it's insensitive. So string case insensitive is going to compare two strings, and then um, it doesn't worry about whether it's um, the same case or not. It's just whether it's the same um, letter family. So now, in the back of your book, you remember you have a lot of blank places for um, contracts. So pause now and write the contracts for all five of these Boolean functions. Less than, greater than, equals, string equal huh, and string ci equal huh. So pause right now and write the contracts for all of those. Okay. So today you learned about a new data type called Boolean. Boolean values can either be true or false, and they're useful for testing things. Next time we'll see how to test whether your game character has flown off the edge of the screen.